Alrighty. This little update, finally up to about nearly a uh, thousand one hundred lines of code. And um, yeah, it's all finally starting to take shape. Just a quick demo on this Razor Rotary um, channel expander kit. So first up, just showing you the boot up screen. Obviously you can see some little bit uh, more information there down on the bottom line there. Uh, binary and decimal output. Now they actually correspond with the real PLL output lines. So it's more of a debugging kind of thing so that if you're installing this in a radio and you just want to be able to have a bit of a quicker idea of what's going on at the hardware level, uh, it's displayed on the screen just to save you time and fault finding and so forth. It's just there for a bit of information that most of the time is useless. Um, but if it's sort of a helps and diagnosis and so forth, it's just there. And that can be easily turned off. Um, obviously you saw that, uh, yeah, the press of a button, the boot up logo, okay, the press of the rotary button, bring up menu set up. I'm yet to implement more actions with this button here, so really I only want this menu to come up on a long press or after multiple presses so that it's just a single press should always just take you just to home channel instantly without going through a menu and then a double click will, I don't know, do some sort of other action whatever, you know, it's not really important which way right now but just that there is unique individual functions uh, so setting up home channel rotate to select a home channel so we've got to rotate so if you want to choose, I don't know, whatever, channel 55 maybe you want that to become your new home channel so now it exits out of that little routine or sub menu. So that if I reboot the kit for now, it should end up on channel 55. So yeah, back into the menu. So that's home channel. Uh, display encodes, I just showed you that before. So you can choose to hide or display. So at the moment they were displayed. So if we choose that again, and then exit. A bit of bouncing on that rotary encoder there. But anyway, now that extra info has just disappeared so that all the settings that I've allocated in this menu will be saved into a, like a flash EPROM inside the chip so yes or no, so I'll put that back to yes for now because it's just good for demonstrating uh, so we can choose between 11 meter HFCB maybe later on we'll implement it in for a marine as well, who knows But anyway we'll get to that Just thinking on the fly, so UHF, uh, HF, a little meter band, or some sets in the UHF come out with an MC145-106 or a 109 or even a PLL-02A I believe, so those can definitely be driven by a kit like this, so implementing that, uh, I haven't finished that menu system yet, so once that is completed then selections and step size will be limited rather than having all four always showing. Um, and also according to PLL type because some PLLs can't do 5kc so originally I was showing you a 10kc stepping so now let's go 5kc exit out of the menu and you can see that let's find a channel that everyone's familiar with so channel 16 27155 channel number 16 and the end codes represented on the screen represent that which is really happening at the um, hardware level so if we go one backwards that's why we've got the Z there for zero then you got the 15A 15A0 and so forth so that all reads correctly and on as all the steps And same with the negative direction. Same thing, everything's on it there correctly so that it displays intelligently on the screen what really is happening at the hardware level. Anyway, it's all fine, it's just routines getting them sorted, which, yep, all good. And I think I showed you in the previous video that, yeah, so channel 22 jumps to 24 at that frequency, then channel 25. And then finally matches back up, you know, 26, 28, so forth, so, so that the um, 
two most significant numbers after the decimal place actually equal your uh, channel number thereabouts and then the zero obviously is denoted by the Z okay that's 5kc I haven't really finished these routines correctly yet but um, for 12 and a half that obviously will switch over to um, UHF assignment now the channel numbers won't read correctly here but as you can see uh, the binary encode is scrolling sequentially as it should and along with the frequency and that we have in fact 12.5 KC uh, indicator so I'll write out the proper channel assignments for UHF soon but anyway that's just for now just to show you that it, it is actually in the pipeline and coming along in step size so we have narrowband for HF or 5KC if you like not narrowband in terms of analog filtering but just narrowband in terms of digital centre frequency placement 10KC narrowband UHF so to speak and the wide, wide band channel assignment so wide band you can see the channel well, it's not the channel, but sorry, the frequency does increment in 25kc steps. And that's just simply indicated also by the 25kc indicator. So let's just go back to 10kc steps for now, just because it's just simple for me to work with everything that's set up at the moment. Uh, split RXTX, that's work in progress but that will take a uh, digital input reading from one of the spare pins and it will be hooked up to the PTT switch line so that whichever where the active state is active low or active high will trigger a different encode programmable and assignable within the kit so that if you want to have a, um, a default repeater action for UHF say from 1 to 8 41 to 48 so forth or um, in HF, if you want to have just simply uh, a two-way simplex communication over two separate separate channels. So I haven't written any code for that yet, but that's definitely in the pipeline. And obviously covering all your main PLLs, so 8719, O2As, 145106, 109, uh, UPD858. Probably missed one or two there, but anyway, you get the idea. Let's cover those. Uh, then encode channel 1. Okay, so... This is for calibrating this kit to any particular radio so that whenever channel 1 is displayed on the screen it is actually really driving the encodes for channel 1 and that particular set. So let's for example, just, just for the heck of it, set that to 15 for now. exit out of this menu for a moment and I may look at a sort of a speeding scrolling routine so that if you scroll fast it, it jumps a bit because obviously when you're dealing with 100, 200 channels or more scrolling can take a bit of an effort so anyway there you go we've got um, channel 1 Got the offset of 15 like we just set up so that the frequency is 26965 which is truly channel 1 so that then this radio will at the moment be able to go say down to minus 15 and then it just scrolls around now the next part of the menu I wanted to show you was the minimum and maximum settings for this uh, kit so it's not it's not automatic or auto sensing I'm just going with a manual for now so we can say set up the minimum channel to be maybe minus five we don't want to let uh, our kit not unnecessarily scroll through channels that the VTO does not lock in you want it to be able to just um, access channels that only are active analog wise within the VCO and the um yeah within the VCO so okay so let's set the lower bound to minus five and then rotate to choose maximum channel okay so let's choose a maximum and let's say we'll make the upper bound I don't know 125 so that's now calibrated so that when we exit this menu okay 
So there we go. So minus 5, and then scrolls back to 125, because that's our new, new limit that we made. You could make those two numbers any numbers you wish, as long as the lower number is lower than the higher number, because you can muddle that up, and then it just confuses the kit. I may look at making that in a illegal entry so that it doesn't it doesn't do that but anyway at the moment as long as you set a lower bound and a higher bound it'll only scroll between those two points can't think of much else right now I think that pretty much covers everything I need to show in this update yeah so home channel a bit of debugging on the screen if you wish um, yet to work on that menu to make it fully um, implemented HF UHF step size is already pretty much in bare bones stage working that need to make a start on that menu to make that work PLL type we'll get to that as um, yeah we need to obviously honor BCD coding for 858 and with the 8719 we need to invert the most significant bit the um, most significant bit line invert that and so forth and obviously O2As is reverse order to you know, the maybe MC145, 109, or 106 is all, all the rest for that matter. So, yeah, PLO02A is the only one that's in opposite direction. Um, yeah, and code channel 1, and the min max that we just talked about before, and exit. So, yeah, finally, I will make this rotary encoder so that one button presses, yeah, just your home channel, second two presses might be like scan or something, or three presses or a long one long press will be your menu system so that in future a single press will not take you into menu but that's just for now we'll um, keep working on it thank you very much for watching much appreciated